Please. <laughs> Maybe from this man, who is the head odds maker <laughs> at FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sports book in America. Hell so, yeah. And although we are in constant competition with this lad who is hilarious and very big brained, mm -hmm. he's a good conversation and we appreciate mm -hmm. him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, John Shearer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's going on? How are you doing, Pat? I'm okay, John. How are you? Really good, thanks. I think you got the wrong intro there. Somebody else on later or... I'm talking about you, John. <laughs> what happened to Clay right. yesterday? You guys mm. knew Clay was going to have a bad day. That's why everybody's parlays were just going to be fucked. Yeah, one for ten will not get it done from Clay Thompson. The guys actually are a little bit down on him. They don't think that he's been his old self this season. Obviously, he's shown glimpses of it, particularly in some of the games in the last series. But uh, we're a little bit down on him versus the rest of the market for sure. John, whenever you hear something like the Van Gundy, Steve JV conversation on ESPN or on ABC last night about how there wasn't a technical, but Van Gundy was like, well, in any other game, this would be a technical. And then JV came on and said, well, with the how much time was left to score, it's the finals, the decisions that are being made in the calls and all that. Do you have to take that into account whenever you're trying to predict uh, NBA you know, books and odds and everything like that because of the history, the past, how refs have so much control. Is that something you guys dive into or no? Yeah, I think we're considering it, Pat, really, when you talk about the totals and you see the suppressed totals that we see from the regular season and the postseason. We know the refs let them play a decent bit more in, in, in the finals in particular. I think that's what we've seen so far. Uh, but you definitely see that contraction in the total points, which is all of that information, like you alluded to, that we have considered all the historics in terms of how it's played out in the past. Certainly something we spend a lot of time on. You guys focus on the refs because, like, for instance, in the NFL, whenever we find out the refs, I think it's Friday or Thursday of each week, or maybe it's Saturday. I don't remember exactly which day of the week, but there's always a run through of what the refs like. Hey, this ref likes to do this. These refs like to do this. This is a big thing. You guys have to keep a close tab on all of that, right? Because the Celtics are three and four and three some, and twelve. Three and twelve with one particular ref uh, calling their games. You guys look into that whenever you're setting the lines for everything, or you just try to stay away from it. Um, it's a good question, actually. We, we've had some conversations in the past about the impact of referees when they're announced, like you said, and you definitely will see some sharp money play into uh, the market, maybe not just necessarily with us, but into the market price in general when refs are announced. So there's certainly an edge to be had if you go and actually do the, you know, the research on each ref and their propensity to call fouls or you know, that's obviously the easiest way to assess it, but there's certainly an impact. Uh, we don't really spend a whole lot of time. It would take a lot of work for us to go and kind of tag each ref, try and watch the video, get the analysis. It, it all is done through actual video review and the people that are betting because of referees on totals. Uh, we find that you know we don't really get hit in the mornings when the refs are announced and then the market kind of corrects itself. So uh, plenty of people out there doing the short work for us. How many people on the NBA team putting together odds for the finals here? Um, pretty much all of them, to be honest. They all. Um, some of them are Celtics fans, though, so I find we're a little bit biased towards Boston. <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. How many though? How many people is that? Do we is you don't have to give me an exact. Is it tens? Not twenty. Yeah, there's probably ten of the guys. Obviously, the senior guys, the guys that have been trading it, like I said before on the show for ten, fifteen years, they'll take ownership of the finals in particular and express their opinions where where they think that they make a difference, and that's unfortunately on the Celtics this time around. Um, that's fast. So it is people we are battling against whenever we're trying to make these bets. It felt like for a while you guys were putting up boosts that were hitting, like a lot. The boosts were almost maybe the most sure bet you guys uh, had yeah. on the entire book there for a bit. You guys were getting real hot. How do you pick what's boosted, and what do you try to stay away from in that? Honestly, I think it depends on um, the day, what, what's on, what people are betting on. We certainly try to boost the most topical. You know, you're not boosting – you know, Looney's points in the game, for example, it's always Tatum, it's always Curry. They're the pe things that people want to bet on. Uh, so we try and appeal to what's topical, um, you know, what people are focused on, and, and also try and oh. offer a bit of value. Like, Isn't we're that not out convenient, there picking boosts John? Oh, wow. like, I mean, let's just get right into it. Last night's boost. Yep. Tatum and Steph to both score 30. How many did Steph have after three quarters? 29 points. How many did Tatum have after three quarters? 28 points. How many minutes did they play in the fourth quarter? Combined zero. How'd you know? How? How'd you <laughs> know? Yeah. John? 
we just have a direct line. Steph said it'd be over after three quarters and you wouldn't see him again. And fucking, luckily, that's yeah, what happened. Some people. <laughs> no, but whenever you see something like that happen, I assume you guys are ecstatic. I, you would have to be whenever the fourth quarter starting and it's like, oh, neither of the guys are playing. Hmm. Oh, isn't that? Oh, we perfectly put this is the perfect boost right there at third. Like that's a dream for the book, right? For that to happen. It, honestly, it is, but like that's not the way that we try and think about it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we're not sitting there looking to try and you know win all of these boosts. The boosts are offered honestly, and, you know, with genuine good faith. We want oh. people to have a good experience. We want to give them a bit of value. It was, but it sure is nice yeah, when it goes our way. Boost was. What was the other boost, John? I didn't see it. Connor, what was the other boost? No, I there was uh, Clay Thompson to have five three pointers. Oh, was it? Yeah, I believe oh, so. Oh, is that yeah. right? Was it, was it made five or attempts? <laughs> Definitely wasn't attempts, John. What's your deal? What's your deal? And also, Horford, what's he so gun shy for? The guy yeah. taking those shots <laughs> after having 26. That's your fucking guy. Uh, every other game, he's going to have a huge one on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Uh,